Hello everyone and welcome back. Today is a new day, today is a new video, and my name is Alex and this is my YouTube channel. It was very dramatic. Today's video is about the calotype. I know. Very interesting stuff. So this chapter was a little bit more challenging for me. I am a visual learner and there weren't a lot of videos out there for this chapter. Just reading a textbook doesn't really help me learn. I have to like watch someone or hear someone explain it to me and there wasn't that much out there to kind of like feed my brain. So I don't feel like I really understand it fully that much. And so I decided to bring in a little special guest for us someone to better explain it. So today I have asked my cousin Edith to come in and help explain this whole calotype thing to us. She's a total genius, so she's really good at this whole like knowledge thing, and so she hopefully will do a really good job at explaining it. But I will warn you guys, she's super camera shy. She doesn't really understand this whole YouTube thing, but she's been watching my channel and she said that she's ready to try this. She's ready to go on camera and uh, try this whole YouTube thing. Again, her name is Edith, so if you have any questions for her, be sure to leave them in the comments and address her directly, and she will answer any questions that you have. She will be happy to. And uh, let's go uh, say hi to Edith. Hi, hello, um, my name is Edith. Hi, um, I don't want, I don't want to do no, this. No, no, you're I don't doing fine. Go ahead and sit back down. To. No. Okay, so today we're going to be learning about the calotype. And the, the calotype is, is very interesting. Is that where I cut out and then the music cuts out and then it's a, like a joke? The music cuts out? No, just keep going. Keep going. No, okay. Okay, so today I'm going to teach you a little bit about the calotype. And the calotype was a photographic process and it was developed by William Henry Fox Talbot. It used light sensitive silver iodide on photographic paper. And the process was also extremely slow and sometimes the images would fade over time. Now switch sides. Switch sides? Yeah, so between cuts it's more interesting. Oh. Oh, okay. Now, the chemicals often gave unsure results, and there were often impurities on the paper with these little small fibers on the paper um, because the paper wasn't very high quality. And the images were very uh, two-dimensional because they sat in the paper themselves as opposed to on the paper, like the much more desirable daguerreotype, which we talked about in last week's episode, which you can click right here to see. You're pointing in the wrong direction. There okay. you go. That way. Yep. Right there. Okay. There were many positives in the process, though. But, um, shh. What, what's, what's that about? Well, because there's positives and negatives in photography, and it was, I, I was trying to make a joke. Just stick some notes. No, Come on. No, no jokes. Okay. There were many positives to the process. For instance, a lot of the photographers were given more flexibility with the calotype because the images could be retouched or manipulated using India ink. And India ink is a dark black ink and it was used to darken out the sky in the negatives so that in the positives the sky was clear and bright. And during this time, Talbot maintained rights to the process and he made sure that everyone participating had to have a license to participate and that made the process very expensive. And then in 1851, London's Crystal Palace exhibition was held. It featured international splendors from all different fields. 700 camera images were shown from six different countries. The French received honors in the calotype, while the Americans received top honors in the daguerreotype, because we were still on that. Is it funny? Yep. Am yeah, I, am I being Just funny? Keep going. I, I'm trying to be funny. After that, Talbot was convinced to relieve his rights over the calotype, and people could then practice without a license, and that made the process much more affordable. And then in 1847, Louis Desiree Blancart Ivard introduced the albumin coated paper, and that was paper that was coated. Wait, your your people they don't they don't like science, right? They don't want to hear about the science. No, I mean you could try to teach them if you want. Okay, okay. So it was albumin paper that was first coated in an emulsion layer. Yeah, never mind. Let's not. No? No? Okay. All right. 
Okay, so the discoveries of blank art Evard reduced the exposure time and it made the images sit on top of the paper as opposed to in it. And then in 1851, the first government-sponsored photo project began. A department of the French government hired five photographers to photograph some national monuments that were in danger of deterioration. Edouard Baldus, Hippolyte Bayard, Gustave Le Gray, Henri Lissac, and Omen Strahl set out to photograph these national monuments. After that, the calotype never really found its place in America, but it did introduce the new process that we know today as the negatives and positives of photography. Uh, is that it? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's it. Alright everyone, so, how'd you like Edith? Like I said, this chapter was a little bit more history-filled and tame, but I hope Edith helped you understand it a little better and made it a little uh, entertaining for you. Like I said before, be sure to leave comments asking her questions and she will be happy to answer any questions that you have. And if you like this series, give it a big thumbs up because guys, I'm getting good grades. Like, I'm actually getting good grades because of this and that deserves a thumbs up. So give this video a big thumbs up. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below for new videos every week. We got tons of stuff coming and you don't want to miss it. So hit the subscribe button, be my friend, follow me on Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, Pinterest, all that shiz, I am on it. And my name is the same on all those things. I made it really easy for you, so you best be adding me. I love you guys. I hope you found this interesting, entertaining, or something. I hope you felt something and I will see you guys soon. I'll see you guys soon. Love you guys. Bye!